Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our breakout session for the academic arts. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Alain McCann. I'm head of arts at LCBI. Uh, I also teach English and geography as part of the academic arts program. Um, I'm also the director for the concert band and the jazz band. It's my pleasure to be here with you uh, tonight. It's unfortunate that we can't be in person. Um, I, I much prefer seeing people's faces and, and having face-to-face -face conversations, but uh, these are the times we're in right now. So um, I hope you'll get a sense of what our program is about tonight. Um, just a few logistical items before we start. Uh, my colleague Paul Goldring is behind the scenes here uh, addressing questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to post those into the question chat. He'll be filtering those out. If many questions are coming up that are the same question, uh, he'll pass those forward to me um, and uh, we'll address those at the end. So we'll have a question session uh, and question and answer session at, at the very end. Also, you may notice that I'm not wearing a mask, even though we're in the school. Just want to address the, the COVID policy here. There are no students here, of course, at the school uh, and my colleague and I are socially distanced. Uh, so um, I've chosen not to wear a mask so you could, you could uh, see my face. Uh, so again, thanks for, for joining us. Um, the session tonight is going to be me just talking about what my program is, what our program is here at LC uh, and what we do for the academic arts. Uh, so let's begin. OK, um, so for grade nine, uh, I teach the academic arts program and then in grade 10, uh, Mr. Goldring, Ted Goldring, uh, teaches the grade 10 program. So what is the academic arts? I'm going to start off by saying the academic arts is exactly the same curriculum as any other course running in the school at the same time. So the English curriculum is identical. The geography curriculum is identical. Is identical. So what's the difference? The difference really is that the academic arts accesses and explores the curriculum, as you can see here, through creative critical thought. We focus on experiential learning by going on regular field studies and, and getting out into the world and, and seeing the world. I believe in student engagement and more specifically choice. So part of the academic arts is the fact that students may decide and may choose or have and have the opportunity to express uh, themselves and reach those curriculum expectations using an artistic means. That doesn't always happen, but I try to do that as often as possible. And again, the element of, of choice is, is key. When students have choice in what they're doing, they're more engaged and as a result, more successful, which is our, our overall goal. Uh, for grade nine, students are going to be with me and we do English and geography and then together. Uh, and then in grade 10, they'll do English and history with Mr. Goldring. So in geography, the uh, four aspects that we, we follow according to the curriculum guidelines are the physical environment, resources and industry, demographics, and then sustainable communities. So um, those are the, the major units of study. Uh, what I've chosen to do tonight is just share some student work with you to kind of show you how students have chosen to access those expectations um, and demonstrate um, the, the key learning. Here's a good example of something I encourage students to do as often as possible, and that is take sketch notes. Um, I don't know about you, but certainly when I went to school, this is not what notes looked like. Um, however, uh, these are rich with information. They're rich with engagement. Uh, they offer students an opportunity um, to keep their mind engaged as they doodle, yet um, gain important information. Uh, and this is a choice that I allow students to do, of course, in anything that we're, we're talking about. This one specifically is about Canada's landforms uh, and geologic history in our first unit of study in geography. Here's an interesting example of a student work um, when we're talking about landform regions of Canada. This student decided to take uh, David Francie's skating rink from the album Skating Rink and uh, made a correlation between the, the landscape shape and the melody within the piece. And she wrote a wonderful um, piece of work explaining that and, and, and really discussing the importance of, of our, our environment, of our landscape, of our, our, our physical kind of features in Canada. Uh, and again, this was an entirely choice assignment. I prompted with some guiding questions, of course, but uh, this student just really took off with this idea, not only as a visual artist, but as a musician as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we talk about Canada's resources and industry, uh, this is an example of um, after uh, focusing on, on Annie Leonard's story of stuff, students are challenged to pick any product they want and, and, and chart out um, the, you know, how that product is made, how it affects us, 
um, as far as extraction, as far as resources. Um, uh, and so this is uh, for goldfish crackers. Again, similar, but with Hubba Bubba Gum, um, we talk a lot about sustainability in, in my course. And you can see here on the screen, I call this the triple P model, people, planet, profit. This, this is kind of the guiding principle behind everything we do um, when, we're, when we're, we're studying things. Uh, you know, how does it affect people? How does it affect the planet? And how does it affect the economy? Um, you may have also noticed that the geography you're looking at right now is very different, certainly than my, when I was in school. We have moved away from, uh, you know, uh, coloring maps every single day to focusing on, on issues and, and, and how we as Canadians can uh, effect change in the world uh, based on, on those issues. As part of focusing on sustainable communities, I have students uh, as one of the choice assignments um, if they want to design a sustainable town. This is uh, this student has chosen to uh, design a very unique layout. Of course, accompanying this is an explanation, a written explanation of the choices they made, uh, why their city is designed like this, what kind of sustainable features the city has, um, and then uh, and then to explain it to uh, colleagues in a kind of uh, sharing sharing opportunity. When we talk about Canadian perspectives, issues, and and specific Canadian issues, but specifically global global issues. Um, I had students at this point uh, just kind of pitch me an idea of, of how they'd like to express that. This particular piece of work came from a student that had um, come from Pakistan and felt so moved by being in this amazing country that uh, he decided to uh, rewrite the anthem uh, and, uh, and sing it to us. It was amazing. And he didn't particularly consider himself a musician, but he took that risk. Again, having the choice to do so, he felt really moved and inspired to do this. This also, of course, was accompanied by a written piece explaining why he had made the choices he did, and uh, and it was a great uh, great assignment. So, as I mentioned, we talk about sustainability. We also talk about environmental and social justice. It's it's a big overarching theme in our course, and that allows students to kind of be involved in, and have their voice heard, and really focus on important issues, not just about the planet, but about people. So moving on now a little bit to English, um, here's a kind of highlight of what we do in the English course. Again, the same curriculum. Um, this is uh, this is what other students are going to be doing, but we kind of access it in, in, in a different way um, with more choice uh, and, and options to, to infuse the arts when appropriate. So as part of preparation for the OSSLT, which is the, the literacy test, which they'll be doing in grade 10, students will be doing in grade 10, I focus on writing news reports and opinion pieces, and I also have a huge focus on essay writing. I think that's an important skill. I have a lot of parents ask me, you know, if my student is in the academic arts program, are they going to be doing the same kind of rigorous work? Absolutely, the, the, the rigor is there, that, that's the name. Uh, it's academic, it is an academic expectation. So I'm a big believer in essay writing because it helps structure ideas in an organized, um, concise and creative way. So we spend a lot of time focusing on that. We do Shakespeare, we do A Midsummer Night's Dream, and we also do uh, Lord of the Flies. When I'm doing this presentation live, there's always a gasp from the audience and often accompanied by, my goodness, they're still teaching that novel. I read it in high school and it felt old when I read it. And I, I hear you and I understand that. The point of Lord of the Flies, first of all, I, I believe it's a great novel because it's very teachable. It helps students feel confident about deconstructing a novel on a deep, deep level and focusing on imagery and symbolism and really getting involved uh, in, in a book and feeling like they own it after. And also, I mentioned earlier, we talk about engagement. Um, I have a conch that, of course, I have in class. I have a couple. One is to pass around. I can't do that in COVID times, obviously. Uh, but uh, once COVID is over, we'll go right back to that. I have a conch that we pass around when we discuss things to simulate uh, the idea that democracy is important and we have to listen actively. And I also, of course, have another conch that I play uh, to begin the lesson. And I play that conch good and loud at the beginning of every, every class and students uh, come flocking into the class. In fact, just as a quick side note, um, sometimes I play it so loudly that I have students from previous years run down to my classroom and say, Mr. McCann, we, we heard the conch. Is, is there a meeting? Right. So it just goes to show that uh, student engagement is key. Uh, and uh, certainly we have fun with uh, with that novel. That leads nicely into uh, other literature that we focus on from diverse authors, indigenous authors, people of color authors, just to diversify what we read. And we do that in a book club setting, students of choice on several books that they can focus on, and then we, we break off into groups and, and have rich discussions about that. 
And of course, we also focus on short fiction being short stories, um, passage analyses, etc. Here there are a couple examples of some of the choice assignments that I would give. So my students, uh, for example, in Midsummer Night's Dream, the student chose to do what's called a sociogram. So uh, an example of, of what all the characters, who all the characters are, <clears throat> excuse me, and then various arrows accompanied by legends showing the relationships in be between these characters. I find this to be a very rich way of, of, of getting an, a deeper understanding of the characters uh, and really kind of mapping this out. Some students choose to hand draw this. Um, other uh, students have done this via video. So again, the element of, of choice is there and I'm open to anything that students suggest to me as long as it meets the expectations. So uh, I've, uh, there have been a lot of great creative solutions suggested in the past. This is just one of them. Here's a cool example of uh, combining geography and English together. This is a map of the Lord of the Flies Island. And if you kind of have a quick look at it, 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 it's a pig's head with the ears both left and right there with that light um, island on the right. So we capture the, the elements of geography and mapping skills, which are, are crucial, uh, but also weave it into uh, quote analysis and, and understanding of uh, Lord of the Flies. So accompanying this map are quotes that the students have chosen and feel are important. Um, and then they've included that. What, what we'll do to continue this assignment is take one of these quotes and, and provide a deeper analysis um, in, a, in a written assignment. This is us getting ready for uh, essay preparation. So one of the things that I love to do is I have students do uh, kind of life-size body biographies, uh, a life size image. This is a huge image uh, on a big piece of craft paper surrounded by quotes that the students have chosen that they feel are important for this character. So what we would do during our essay preparation is we would post these all around the room and then when the time comes to write our essays, the students are free to kind of get up and wander around and gather quotes from what we've extracted as a class and use those for their essays. And I encourage them all the time if they're in the middle of an essay and they want a, to, a different quote or they and you know they can easily just get up and walk over to it, allows them to stretch their legs, to, to, to think a little bit and to use what they've done in class um, to, uh, to do something uh, summative. This is a similar example, uh, but for Lord of the Flies. So here you see the conch and quotes that surround the conch. Of course, we focus on the conch as a, as a powerful uh, symbol and image in, in, in the novel of which I would ask them to discuss uh, in an essay. Um, and they can use these as, uh, as we've, we've got the room covered in them. A huge part of the academic arts is experiential learning. So getting out of the class and, and going out into the world. Now, the beauty of the academic arts is I have the students all morning. So for English and geography, and so does Mr. Goldring. That means they start the day with me, uh, and I'm talking about a non-COVID schedule right now, a non-octomester schedule. Um, so they are with me all morning, uh, English first, and then geography or geography in English. It depends on what we decide. Um, and this provides an opportunity for me to go out into the world with them. Uh, and we go to a variety of different places. We go to the Kingston Writers Fest. We go to the Isabel Bader Center and get a tour of all the, all, all the features there. We go to the Kingston Area Recycling Center when we're focusing on sustainability uh, and sustainable practices. We focus on ecology and our eco footprint at the uh, Little Cat Conservation Area, spend a morning there, and at the Agnes Etherington Art Center for various exhibits uh, that are being presented. That's just a number, uh, just a, a few of the places we've gone in the past. This year, unfortunately, we weren't able to do this. I've deferred them all to next year. So the current grade nines, uh, hopefully COVID allowing, will will be doing their field studies in grade 10, uh, combining with my grade nine class in September 2021. This is us at the Agnes. Etherington Center, um, everybody smiling, of course, because I, I told them to smile <laughs> and look happy. They had a great time, though, really. This is us after the Tao Lewis exhibit at the Agnes Etherington. Uh, Tao Lewis, a, a Toronto uh, artist who focuses on using uh, not garbage, but elements of that can be recycled, things that can be recycled uh, to create art. So the students were really inspired by that, and we got an opportunity to go kind of backstage after and, and have a have a workshop. Um, inspired by Tao Luce's work. This is us at the Kingston Area Recycling Center, uh, and that's a great place to go. And as you can see, because we get to wear hats and cool vests, and we also get to focus on on recycling and what actually goes on. I know a lot of students have gone to this place, you know, in grade five and six, but when we go, we focus, of course, on a much deeper level as to how Kingston uh, is can Kingston a sustainable city. What are we doing well? What could we do better? Uh, so we always have a good time on that uh, on that trip. 
Right now in front of you is a sample grade nine timetable. So they're in semester one. Again, this is a non COVID model when we're in semester semester mode, not octomester mode. In semester one, we've got English and geography. And if you can see highlighted in a kind of teal color is where the students are together as a group. So uh, they're together with me for English and they're together in geography, but then they have the option of taking our lunchtime credits. We have concert band that runs. It did not run this year because of COVID, but it is scheduled to run next year, COVID allowing. Uh, this allows them to take an extra credit. Um, students often ask, well, when do we eat our lunch? I build some lunch eating time within that um, lunch time. So we, we do our, our rehearsal and then they have about 20 minutes to eat their lunch. It's only twice a week and it's a full year course and they get an extra credit. Uh, sample again in the afternoon, some will choose to will have French and then their elective arts credit, which kind of often students steer to their their specific kind of area of focus. As I mentioned before, in my English and geography class, um, it's not a product based program. I'm not teaching them to be better artists or musicians or dancers. That's not what, what we do in in uh, the academic arts program. What we do is we kind of, you know, get students to uh, contribute their craft into a mainstream curriculum. In period five, where they have their elective, that's when they get the opportunity to, to say, I'm a musician, I would like to take music, or um, I would like to take the dance class, or I would like to take et cetera, et cetera. Uh, semester two uh, for the grade nines, that they would have their compulsory math and science, again, the concert band, which runs all year. And then just to highlight this tech video production uh, course that runs period four, they're all together again, because in other courses they may be, uh, they, they may be separate and not, and taking perhaps different, different pathways. But for the video production class, they're all together again. This is a really rich class where uh, they, they focus on uh, photography, uh, film, editing, just amazing. So a uh, really good opportunity to, to contribute their creative ideas. And then lastly, uh, Jim, if, uh, if, if students are, are doing that. OK, looking ahead to grade 11 and grade 12, we're almost at the end here. So again, I appreciate you, uh, you hearing my voice and, and uh, you'll see my face again in just a moment for questions. Uh, but right now, just looking ahead to grade 11 and 12, what happens to academic arts? Well, students by that point have gone in many different directions and they're not all together anymore. Uh, and one thing they often choose to do is the, what's called the specialist high skills major. And the SHSM in the arts and culture sector, as written here, will give um, sector recognized certifications and training programs that we do here at the school that will help them once they graduate and perhaps move into an arts related field. For example, students that are interested in set and light design. Uh, we offer workshops throughout the grade 11 and 12 SHSM program that they can do. Whereas when they get into the real world, they may have to pay for that in order to get a job somewhere. That's part of the SHSM. We've got some in the drama field uh, about stage combat and, and different uh, theatrical uh, kind of areas. In music, we've got a music instrument repair category where students can, uh, can focus on that. So as they get to grade 11 and 12, lots of uh, opportunity to streamline if they're headed into the arts. So um, just to wrap up here, registration can be done at lcbistudentservices.com. That's lcbistudentservices.com. It's a great website run by Karina Dupuis, who is our head of student services. Um, and the application uh, links are there and they're quite self-explanatory. So I encourage you to go there and, and have a look and feel free to email Karina Dupuis if you do have questions about that. Um, applications are due on January 14th. Um, and there are some uh, requirements to upload videos and, and things, so it would be a good idea to start that process sooner, sooner than later. But again, any questions, uh, Karina would be happy to, uh, to answer those. OK, I'm going to go back to, uh, to my, uh, my face here and we'll, um, we will look at some questions if we have any. So here I am. Hi, thank you for, uh, for uh, sitting through that. Um, and let's just go to our question panel here. Um, so how important, the question is, how important is it to be super talented artistically, etc.? Thank you for asking. Let me be clear. This is not a talent search. Your child does not get into the academic arts program because they can draw a flower better than another student. It is not a talent search. We are looking for students that are able to think critically and creatively. What does that mean? That's a, that's a nebulous definition. We want students that are willing to take healthy academic risks and think outside the box. Uh, it does not have to be, have to be a product based kind of artistically talented based um, output. Are math and science skills important in AAEP? 
Um, well, absolutely. It's an, it's an academic program and, uh, and the expectation is that students um, are ready for some academic rigor, which is why we ask to see the uh, latest report card. Um, and we've, we do focus on, on learning skills. We want to make sure that students have good initiative and, and are, again, willing to take, as I mentioned, uh, healthy risks. Uh, as far as uh, their academic uh, learning. Math and science for my program, um, of course, we're not focusing on, on math and, and science, but when they break off and are with other students, there are students that are, are in different pathways, and that is a possibility. Um, and by pathways, I mean academic or applied, uh, and, and they can stream into those pathways. But overall, we do look at the report card and, and we hope that uh, their learning skills are, are, are showing that, uh, that students, again, are willing to take risks. OK, and those are all the questions I see right now. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, again, I really prefer to be um, live in the classroom and, uh, and, uh, and, and seeing, seeing people. And also I get to play the conch for you, which is a hugely important part, but I figured I would spare the microphone um, the damage and just leave the conch in my classroom, which I did. Um, so I encourage you, as I said, I've, I've, I've been teaching the program for 15 years. Uh, I, I love this school. I love the program. Um, I have kids of my own that are, are coming to high school soon, and I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that they'll choose LCVI. Uh, I've been here for 18 years, and, and I love it. So it's a great school uh, for your child. It's a, it's a, a wonderful kind of uh, opportunity to, to be with staff and uh, that care and, and want to make sure your child is successful. So are the graphic arts included in the uh, elective arts option? Thank you for the question. Um, we have a, a fine arts uh, section, AVI, and in that section, I'm not sure specifically if they call it graphic arts, but I know that Mr. Sheedle and uh, Ms. McEwen, who are here, again, are very uh, open to, uh, to kind of any, uh, any uh, option that students want to steer towards. I know Mr. Sheetle spends a lot of time with uh, Photoshop in his media class, in his video editing class. And Ms. McEwen spends a lot of time uh, doing graphic design with her students. So, uh, you know, the, the overall answer is at LCVI. Um, that is a focus. And as far as the specific visual arts focus, I, I'd be confident to say, uh, yes, that would be that would be there. My most innovative adjustment with COVID. That's a great question. Um, well, you know, I'll, I'll share what one of my other colleagues has done uh, as part of the academic arts program is Amy Healy, who teaches drama, which is one of the arts electives uh, that your, your child may choose. Uh, every year they make masks, um, uh, not medical masks, but theatrical masks. And this year, of course, because students can't take their masks off to put their masks on, if you, if you get where I'm going here, she decided to um, put those masks onto face shields. So students wear their medical masks and then have a face shield with a theatrical mask with um, plaster actually on, on the shield. So that's, in my opinion, pretty innovative. Um, one thing also that I have done uh, this year, and I did this last year as well, but it, it works very well with COVID, as part of livable communities, uh, and having students kind of work together to create a livable, sustainable community. I run a Minecraft server in my classroom with Minecraft Education Edition, which is licensed by the board. The Limestone District School Board has, has a license for that. Um, so students log on to our class server. They're each allocated a plot of land, uh, and then they decide as a community what they think is important uh, as far as having a livable, uh, a livable town and working together. And uh, again, these are, are directly from the expectations and it's COVID friendly, of course, because students are each at their desks, uh, but within this virtual world, they're interacting, they're close, um, and, uh, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's a great way to, to, to kind of be together when, when we can. So that's fairly innovative. I've done it pre-COVID, but certainly now COVID, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's great. Okay, um, can we submit applications before January 14th? I would expect so. I, I think it's uh, anytime you're ready, click submit. They go to uh, Ms. Dupuis and, uh, and she, um, she looks at them. Um, anything that is received after January 14th will be put on a waiting list, a wait list. Um, but up until January 14th, there's, I mean, there's no benefit to giving it sooner than later, but um, there's no, no detriment either. Thank you for the question. 
Um, how good does a progress report have to be in order for a student to get in? So we're just looking for flags. I mean, if if a student has has uh, learning skills that are not all excellent, that doesn't mean they're not going to get in. But it would be interesting to have a conversation with them or to see in their reflection something like, you know, last last year I got a I got a satisfactory in my whatever learning skill, and one goal that I've set for myself is, and then just to see uh, some some initiative. Now that being said, I think if a student has all needs improvements. Um, that that's a flag for us, right? So the question then becomes, what's what's going on there, and and maybe worthy of a conversation with that student, and as to as to maybe they were in a different place there, and, and they're looking for a change. So, uh, kind of a nebulous way to answer your question, but the the progress report is important. We're looking for strong initiative. We're looking for good organization, um, uh, but again, also for students that are willing to take a healthy risk and and to think outside the box. I'm just going to get a drink. Excuse me here. Thank you for the question, by the way. So I think um, just before before we end, I will wait around for a little bit to see if there are any other questions. Again, this um, live event um, is being recorded, so if you want to go back and and watch any any part of it again, um, you can do that. And then, of course, if you have any questions, they'll have to go to Ms. Dupree via email. <coughs> Excuse me. What are band and choir like? They're incredible, epic, um, and I'm not biased because I teach them. That no, they. Band concert band is an incredible opportunity for students to come together um, and 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 play instruments. So let me give you a little bit of a, um, uh, a background. Uh, we have a junior band and a senior band. Because of COVID, that might be kind of moved into one band again. We've been there and that worked fine. Um, band runs at lunchtime, so at 11 o'clock, students uh, come to me and they bring their instruments. It's recommended that students have a little bit of music experience. Uh, band is not the place to be if you want to learn how to play a musical instrument. I have beginner music classes for that, and then that transitions really well into band. But concert band, it's more about I know how to play. I've had like a year or two of experience. I can read music on, even on a basic level. Um, we meet at 11 o'clock at, at lunch and we rehearse for 45 minutes, and then I give 15 minutes for, for, uh, for lunch, sometimes 20 minutes. Uh, we go through repertoire um, and we have evening, we have two evening of the arts, which run in December and in May. Uh, those are big concerts and, uh, and, uh, and we perform our repertoire. Choir, very similar. That's run by Ms. White, uh, formerly Convery, you may have known her as that, but Ms. White now. Uh, and um, it runs at lunchtime. Uh, Ms. White does a fantastic job with students as far as engaging them. The choir has healthy numbers always. Ms. White is heavily involved in Cantabile Choir, so her, her expertise is incredible. Uh, so I would highly recommend that. And let's be honest, at the end of your high school career, future employers are looking for students having done things above and beyond, and concert band uh, and choir are definitely uh, part of that kind of spectrum. Um, do students need prior music experience to join concert band? Yes, please. Only because I don't really have the time in concert band to teach the skills, the basic skills of instrument playing. However, I do in my beginner music class. So on the option sheet, that looks like beginner music, grade nine music. Um, so if they take grade nine music, um, that's uh, that very helpful. So oftentimes students will want to sign up for concert band with no experience. And I say to them, take beginner music. And after they do that, the transition into concert band is often is is very smooth. And, uh, and, 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 and students are successful. If a student is currently in LEAP, and for those who aren't familiar with LEAP, that's the program at Calvin Park Limestone Education Through the Arts program. Uh, will it help them with consideration of their application? It will not help with consideration. There's no preference. However, those students are already in an environment <clears throat> where critical creative thought is happening. So is it advantageous? It is, but by by circumstance rather than by entitlement. Um, so it's if we see that a student has come from leap, it doesn't go on, on a special pile. Um, however, more than likely, um, you know the work that they're going to be submitting is going to be hopefully creative and 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 critically thought out. Thank you for asking. To confirm, uh, is it 32 students accepted? Um, that is, uh, I'm just going to confirm with my colleague who, yeah, that's the 32 is, is the acceptance uh, for the program. Thank you for the question. 
just another shout out to the behind the scenes here, uh, Mr. Paul Goldring, who is uh, fielding all these questions and, and putting them forward to me. Thank you very much, Paul, for doing that. So the program has, uh, as I mentioned, has run for, I've been teaching it for 15 years. It was, it started a year before that, so it's been running for 16. Um, and it's been, the numbers have been very healthy since since the beginning. It's, it's a great opportunity for students to access mainstream curriculum in kind of unique uh, and creative ways. Um, I've certainly enjoyed teaching it uh, and I look forward to it uh, again. I'm hoping that uh, COVID uh, you know, it's not obviously probably won't be gone, but hopefully we're in a position where we can we can change a little bit how how we do things at school. But if not, we will we will prevail because LC is a resilient place, and the staff are committed uh, to excellence and engaged education. Okay, so seeing no questions, I welcome you to email Karina Dupree with any questions um, and to review my uh, my presentation at your at your convenience if uh, if uh, you'd like clarification or anything in my in my uh, keynote. Uh, so thank you again for for joining me. Again, my name is Anna McCann, uh, head of arts at LCBI, and uh, and uh, it was my pleasure to do this for you. And I hope to see you uh, at LC in September as future lancers. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>